Emma is our Banish Store Public Community Manager at Bite Size Irish. So I wanted to do an interview with her. I guess away we go. <laughs> so Emma, um, is the walk like it's a bit strange, isn't it? Because we're usually speaking Asquilga on the team at Bite Size Irish. So touch the cert at Nahuilve Glart as Berla Lakela, but I suppose we have to do it in English mostly for the audience. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. It's good it's good to get to know your English side as well, Owen. It's almost <laughs> like a second personality, you know, I, I feel anyway. Let it out sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Grant. We live with that. So Emma, um people might will recognize you on YouTube if they're subscribed to Bite Size Irish because uh you do regularly uh, live Q and A's for the Irish language. So to introduce you a little bit to people watching and listening, this will be a podcast as well. Um Emma is from Perklaraga, Waterford. Um she studied Irish at university and very interestingly as well as working at Bite Size Irish as community manager. Um, she teaches Gaelga at a university in Germany. So it'll be really interesting to get her perspective on that. So Emma, how would you introduce yourself? Yeah, well, Gurmahagadon, you gave me a nice introduction there. Yeah, so I hail from Waterford, uh, Dungarvon, uh, to be specific, or Dungarvon in the sunny southeast. And I went, as you said, I studied uh, Irish in college, but I also attended an all Irish speaking primary school. Now, if anyone knows the geography of Ireland, um, which I'm sure plenty of you do, um, Dungarvan is very close to uh, a Gaeltacht area, uh, which is on Rhine or Ring. So I actually was lucky enough to grow up near enough to a Gaeltacht. I'm not from the Gaeltacht. My grandmother lives about 15 minutes drive. I'm really on the border. Um, to it but I was lucky enough to get the influx of teachers that came from the Gaeltacht and I grew up from the age of four until around about 12, 11, 12 learning Irish from native speakers from the Gaeltacht area so I'm very proud of that that I got that opportunity to start off Um, but then I went on to my secondary schooling and I wasn't so happy to um, head out to the Gaeltacht area to um, do my secondary schooling just because it was far out and it was a smaller school I wanted to be in town so I kind of dropped my Irish um, love uh, for my secondary schooling but I found my way back so yeah I finished my degree in Irish and German in UCC and decided to move to Germany and pursue German and I uh, fell into this job of teaching Irish um, in Leipzig in the east of Germany Um, and I've been here actually just three just over three years it was my three-year anniversary in Germany on the 10th of January so um happy anniversary to me um so yeah I'm in I'm in the university almost three years now and I absolutely love it and then I found Bite Size last year so I really I didn't think from something that I thought was just going to be six months long in Germany working you know in a shop or a cafe practicing my German I've now found my niche here I think and I hope to continue on. It's interesting isn't it that you can end up with like Gaelga being your current career in different ways Mm -hmm. um so like when you were it was a Gael school right um your primary school so at the time do you remember it being anything special or like for you like Gaelga was just like a natural thing you're a kid in that environment how did it feel yeah good question I I didn't think much of it when I was there um my parents didn't have Irish and we didn't grow up you know when I was one between one and four I didn't grow up speaking Irish um and I just went in I I remember being in the um in the Nínra in the play school there uh starting off I think it was the age of three and um 
I don't I never remember any any difficulty that was the that's the first thing I never really remember having any difficulty um understanding obviously we weren't thrown into just speaking in Irish I'm sure there was a mix of Irish and English that the kids could understand but as I went through school not really um even I, my cousins had all one of one or two of them actually transferred over to the Irish school when my when my aunts and uncles saw that other cousins were going so a lot of my family we all actually I always had family um in maybe an older class or a younger class than me. And I never really noticed a difference until I actually went into secondary school. And then, mm -hmm. then I got mixed in with students um, who had, I think 80% of them had gone to English speaking primary schools. It was a couple of people. There was only one or two from my primary school that went on into my secondary school with me. And then there was one or two from the actual Gaeltacht schools. And they were the ones that kind of put emphasis on, oh, Emma knows Irish. Emma can speak Irish. Oh, Emma, can you tell me the homework? How can you do the homework? Mm. You know, you were used that way. Um, the biggest change, I suppose, was speaking in my in English to my teacher because that wasn't really done Um in my primary school but no I never I it was really normal to me and even though I I wasn't living in the Gaeltacht when I came out of school I spoke English um it was never a huge difficulty or a huge difference it was just school school time was Irish time and home time was English and my mother did mix in Irish as much as she could when she did her homework with us and everything but it was a nice kind of mix of both in my life I think it was quite equal Okay, and what, let's say the homework, right? Because there, I definitely hear people, um, parents of Grail schools, especially my two sons are in a Grail school now, locally in Limerick, mm -hmm. and definitely some parents, uh, depending on how much Grail get they have, they can struggle with that. So, like, did your mom when you were growing up have enough Grail get to like support you? She did. As I, there was always a couple of things. I think mathematics was the one that would 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 yeah. stump you, <laughs> just because the vocabulary is so specific, isn't it? Um, mm. but I think you get the hang of it after a while. Um, <clears throat> we were obviously sent home with books at certain points. You know, you pick up these books and you have to do certain reading and things like that in English and in Irish, um, to practice your phonics and all of that. Um, I remember my mother, my mother got on better than, better than my father. Um, I think my mother was better in school. Um, my father says that he has a, he has a skill for not retaining information. And I'd say he just, <laughs> I'd say he just left my mother to it a bit more, but, um, I'm sure it took her, you could ask her maybe, but, um, I'm sure it took her maybe a year or two to get the hang of it. But, um, she got along quite well and she picked up quite a lot from us as well, which was really interesting. And she still has it. You know, she still I remember she'd always she'd never used the word lunch. It was always loan. And she mm. still says it to me to this day. Do you want some loan? So I like that about her. Mm. She still has that um, that, you know, inkling from when we were in school and when we were young. But yeah, it can be really difficult. And I understand um, how parents, you know, would struggle. But I think the further on they go in school, you see the repetition of the vocabulary even that you use, you know, especially with maths or or certain things that need um, working out. But the schools are often quite helpful as well in that sense. If, if, if ever, you know, support is needed from parents, they are quite helpful. I remember the teachers were yeah there's definitely understanding there for sure yeah mm -hmm. um and like these days there's like whatsapp groups and stuff between parents so there's a bit of help going on there as well uh, exactly yeah yeah i see it i have to say with some people some families i guess in our school um i see some parents are using little bits of guelga with the kids and i suppose it's hard to tell how much exposure they're really getting but it does seem to help, um, mm -hmm. even if they're using phrases that it's not completely alien to hear any Irish at home. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting, yeah. So you kind of scooted past secondary school there. Um, <laughs> so like, I, I have to say, I didn't enjoy Irish in secondary school. Like, I, I guess I'd be more interested now, but like, the going into the leaving cert that, that exam at the end of secondary school um like there was poetry and literature that just it didn't speak to me at the time mm -hmm. um 
So did you have any interest in Gaelga in that way or was it after school then completely that you kind of came back to Gaelga? So when I entered first year um, after coming out of primary school, I remember that I the level that was we were on, I kind of basically went back to first class, in my opinion. I found the classes quite... I suppose uninspiring because it was something that I had covered when I was eight or nine years old. We the teachers obviously have to have a basic level for everyone and get everyone on a common level in the first and second year. So we're leading up to our the first round of exams in our third year of secondary school. So I remember being just quite unmotivated and it didn't really give me it was more so a class that I knew that I could relax in. Um, whereas yeah. everyone else was trying to maybe catch up or learn or you know whatever Irish level that they had from their English speaking schools it all depends as well you know on on each school absolutely each school that they come from um going through school it was just something that I didn't hate but I didn't necessarily love either I was just uninspired and just right Irish and um a lot of my friends used to ask for help I'd have no problem helping the teacher would call on me often you know to explain things or you know to answer questions if the class hadn't a clue um it came to then maybe fifth and sixth year when we were gearing into actual curriculum learning for the end of year or end of school exams. And um, there, there's 20 picture stories that you should learn um, to be able to rattle off um, in your oral exam. And the oral exam is worth 40 percent. And what you have to do is you choose from one of the 20 on the day. And realistically, the teacher tries to get you to almost learn off a script off by heart that you were able to um just rattle off in in, in the exam mm. now that never that was never my vibe at all I really uh, learning anything off by heart was quite difficult to me anyway and um, so I remember kind of sitting there going oh my god like why are we learning this off by heart but obviously there's 20 picture stories and for someone who isn't you know amazing at Irish learning it off by heart has to happen unfortunately and that happens with every kind of exam you know if you're learning off anything for even a definition for something in science fine um but I remember sitting in class and thinking what am I going to do after college or after school where am I what am I going to do for my university or college and I was always interested in um in computers and I thought that I might do something in the line of digital media or design and I actually went to a couple of open days but I was sitting in class and I thought, I I love Irish. I love Irish. And it's actually, I, I felt sad that I'd spent the last six years not hating Irish, but also not pursuing anything with it. And I thought it as a shame that I had spent all these years um, in primary school. And now I'm kind of spent the last six years redoing primary school, but in a more uninteresting way. Um, and a friend said to me, Emma, like, why don't you do it in college? And I thought, yeah, I suppose I could. But I thought I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be a secondary school yeah. teacher or primary school teacher, because that's often what people would, you know, aim towards. That's the kind of first thing that you think of anyway, especially as an 18 year old or 17 year old in school. You think, well, I can only be an Irish teacher in a school. And I thought, no, I don't want to do that. So I ended up actually kind of tying with the idea of doing Irish. I looked at um, different things with within Irish on Irish but I had no interest in law I thought well what the hell am I going to do and I just thought then well I'm not so bad at German um I didn't I wasn't top of the class but I thought right let's go for that and I ended up actually deciding on it to go forward in my bachelor in just doing languages now languages were never my thing but I think the fact that I had Irish really pushed me I don't think if I was if I'd gone if I hadn't gone to the Irish speaking primary school I definitely wouldn't have been at the level that I was in secondary school and I absolutely don't think I would have gone forward with it in university so I had this like enlightening enlightening moment at the end of my school days where I thought no I am this is one thing that I'm really good at in school um from because I had that skill from when I was young and I decided to go with it and I've landed myself here doing it and I love I didn't think I'd even love it as much and here I am as a teacher okay I'm not I'm not in a secondary school or a primary school but I'm teaching it and my mother always wanted me to be a teacher she said that they get great holidays but um I've ended up doing it and I'm delighted absolutely delighted I did it um but yeah um so I'll, I'll jump back a little 
Um, mm. Because I find it interesting, like that you said you're from Dune Caravan, Dun Garvin. Um, okay, so when I visit uh, Galway City, I always notice that there's more Irish around than typically I would see, say in Limerick, there's definitely more of an Irish language vibe going on. Mm-hmm. Um, do you, have you noticed that in Dungarvan? Like, is there any Irish that creeps into life there or is it your average English speaking town? No, definitely. There's definitely more Irish there than I would expect in, you know, or that I'd see in maybe even Cork City, you know, where right. I lived for college. Now, Cork City is obviously bigger than Dungarvan. Um, but the point being that when I was working, I worked in a local cafe in the square in Dungarvan. And even there, people didn't know I was a Gael Gore. OK, I'd often get te- old teachers would come in and they'd say, oh, <laughs> Because it's all too, you know, and it'd be lovely to chat to them. But I'd often, I'd hear a lot of families coming in, a lot of families coming in with kids oh. speaking Irish fully, ordering an Irish, the whole lot. Now they turn to me then and speak in English, um, because obviously they'd presume um, that I wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't presume that anyone has has flu is fluent enough. But I would just, my face would light up and I'd um, be able to do everything in Irish with them and I noticed that a lot um, working for that I think I worked about six months in that cafe and I really saw um, how I, I more people than I ever would have thought speaking Irish and as well as that there's a lot of bars and pubs around that have Gael Gores within them so it's kind of like if you know you know um, yeah. and I know people just through friends or from school or, you know, you know that they're from the Gaeltacht. You would always go for Irish with them. And Dungarvan is really good because it's, um, I can't think of the actual term, but it's a, ser- a service town for the Gaeltacht. So there's a lot of people that live in the Gaeltacht that will come into Dungarvan and do their you know, do their shopping, do their work, do a oh, lot of things okay. like that. Because Ring, on Rhine, Ring has a couple of shops, you know, a bar and a restaurant, but the closest town and the biggest town to it is Dungarvan and it's it's quite big. There's um a, a movement there, there's a, an organisation, Dungarvan La Gaelga, so Dungarvan with Irish, and there's um readings, there's uh, kids' readings organised in the local library. There's a lot of things going on there, mm-hmm. um, but you kind of have to know that they're going on you know, it's it's social media is a brilliant thing. I now know about it because, you know, of uh, Facebook groups and everything following them. But I even know about them when I'm in Germany. So I try and keep up with what's going on in Nogarvan because I find that it's going to grow. Um, it's going to grow in the years. I don't think it's going backwards. I think it's going forwards in Dungarvan because of the fact that Ring is there. The college is there that students go to in the summer to, you know, mm-hmm um to study Irish there's also then um the the everything everything that's going on in ring kind of flutters into Dungarvan at some point then interesting um I don't personally have that context context with Dungarvan so that's cool mm-hmm. um I remember when I was a teenager we visited on Ryan and I was surprised that there was a great deck there I didn't I wasn't aware growing up that there was any type of grail duct there. Uh, it wasn't on my radar anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's it's monster Irish, right? Um, am I right there? Mm-hmm. It is. And but it's kind of in my mind strange geographically because the grail duct in my mind is always over on the west coast somewhere, like uh, Connemara mm-hmm. or Kundahiri. So it it is a bit of a discrepancy in that way isn't it yeah it's we're we're just on the border you know we're in the south we're in the we're technically the southeast aren't we um but you're heading west you know you come down you fly into dublin and you come down the east coast and you're heading west when you hit uh dungarvon (laughs) but even at that like with the idea of monster irish there's monster irish and then obviously there's there's that's D- further divided within Munster then you know you mm-hmm. have um Gwilgamoscree or you know Cork Irish and then you obviously have Kerry Irish but you also have, then have Ring Irish and that was something that I noticed when I went to um when I went on to university um I noticed I had been I'd br- grown up learning 
um, my dialect of ring Irish, bar one or two teachers that were from other parts of the country, but you know, it wouldn't really stick too much. Um, and then going into uh, into university and noticing all of the other dialects that I definitely wouldn't have, oh. I've only heard on the, the hour tape, you know, I hadn't met anyone um, <laughs> from Connemara like, or anything any like that. Irish, it's real, like. <laughs> It re I never I never met anyone I couldn't believe it so um and even that that this monster Irish there's a lot of people from Kerry there and I remember when I was do, pronouncing some words people it wasn't so it wasn't so common but one or two people said what did what did you just how did you pronounce that word so one thing about ring Irish is the pronunciation of the eyes the eyes so on rhyme okay. whereas you might hear people say rin rin na rinna um which is fine on rhine and then the words for for example around which is temple which is what a lot of people would say i would say temple and the word for nay the number nine would be nigh and mm. the word for dinner would be dinner or dinner um i would say diner so that was one oh. kind of that's one difference with um ring irish is the eyes which i absolutely i love i tried to change it when i was in university i got a bit confused yeah. i thought that i was wrong almost um mm. and then i met someone um also from ring or from you know that area and they were pronouncing it as i knew so i thought no i'm not wrong so i kind of had this identity crisis when i went there because i wasn't yeah. so sure i wasn't from the gaeltok so i thought oh no i i I must what be doing do it wrong because yeah. I've met other people from Gaeltacht areas and you're pronouncing it this way. So it was something that I had, it was just in me and I never knew existed that ring Irish was a thing until I actually got to university and thought, wait, I'm a bit, I'm pronouncing things differently that aren't the norm or what the teacher is saying, but it doesn't go mean that it's wrong. Whereas I thought it did at the start. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kind of grab it back because I do fall back into saying teampal and the just for people you know just for the lack of you know i don't want any questions or for my own ease <laughs> but i need to hone it back in and because yeah. i i, I really, really it. like it and is there um a word for like a local word for gaelga is it like gaelin gaelin yeah gaelin arena they you'd say um mm -hmm. as far as i'm yeah gaelin arena yeah it's interesting yeah like I find it interesting, I would say, with T.G. Cahir. Now, T.G. Cahir might not agree with this, but I feel that there's definitely a, a leaning towards Connemara, Gaelga, I suppose, simply by the fact that it's headquartered there. Mm -hmm. um, but you can get exposed, like, through the media, I think, a lot easier to, to say Connemara, Gaelga. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to claim your identity of Gaelin Narina, Narina, um <laughs> i guess it could be hard or harder but it, it yeah. definitely speaks to me that um you do claim that dialect to be your own i think there's something special about honing in on that local version of irish you have Mm -hmm. yeah like I've I've spent a lot of time well not a lot of time but a good bit of time in the Kerry Gaeltacht that's where I would often go um that's where we went when we were in college um on our Gaeltacht trips and I love Kerry Irish I had teachers from Kerry one or two and I absolutely I love it and I adore listening to um on Salo Yas on TG Cahar and everything but when I hear someone from on Rhine on TG Cahar, especially on Ancelo, yes, I just, I, I lap it up. I love it. Mm. I hear um, some of my old teachers are on there and um, I just feel like, you know, I'm from Dungarvan. I'm, when I go home and I speak Irish, I speak to people who would have ring Irish or would have learned, you know, Irish from someone in ring or, you know, I speak to people from ring. Why not, why not keep that? Why go on and try and learn and perfect Kerry Irish you know my goal is to eventually be able to go back to Dungarvan and spend some time in ring um, or spend some time even in the Irish school doing even volunteer work just to get my ear back into it because it's not so commonly heard on the radio I can't readily access it you know it's not readily available to me at any point you know um, I do have a couple of friends from the area but it's not enough for me I really want to go back at some point and spend some more time there and really 
perfect get get back what I used to have I think um I don't think I was as aware of it as a child and then you yeah. learn it in school from an, a different book and a different teacher even in secondary school so you you just see you forget it you know it's it happens it's language contact I'm in contact with people that are you know from all different parts of Ireland and speaking all kind of mixes of of dialect mm. and that's fine too but I think just because as someone who's grown up with ring that influence of Von Rhein I really want to embrace it because it is a small whale thought, you know, and um, I want to, you know, support and rep, rep my area. Mm. I suppose I agree with your point as well to ban like people watching this or listening to this, like we often get the question at Bites as Irish, like how do I learn a certain dialect or should I, or it's often even like a barrier for people especially mm -hmm. people outside of Ireland I think I don't think we're so conscious of that question in Ireland because we see it's not such a barrier I would say mm -hmm. the the one thing I'd say about all this is like if you are learning Irish currently like don't let a certain wanting a certain dialect stop you I mean you can always refine it later much like you're talking about Emma yeah um so learning general Gaelga is absolutely fine and you can always refine it uh yeah yeah, yeah. there's a there's a nice mix oftentimes in books as well you know if you are getting books mm. there's a nice mix of course if you are partial to wanting to learn you know if you want to learn Connemara Irish you can go on the search for a book that is solely written in Connemara Irish but there is there are books available that have just a, the standard Irish there which is oftentimes a mix or they allude to all three um dialects within that mm. and you know as you said when people are worried or they don't know even we often get the question what one should I learn which is the best one for me I always say make it relevant to you if you are mm -hmm. interested in a certain part of Ireland or if you have family that are from a certain part of Ireland or if you visited a part of Ireland before that you know it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be just about where maybe you know where where's the best one to be or where's the most available make it personal to you um more so than what's easiest i think because there's no there's no easy dialect all of them are equally you have to learn as much in all of them so i think mm -hmm. making it relevant to your life and where you feel that you would fit in or you would be interested in visiting even um would be my advice there mm -hmm. cool really nice um how about we jump past your university time um mm -hmm. and we bring you to on Yarmine, mm -hmm. where you are. Um, and we can always go back to your time in Cork, if you like. Um, so can you give us a bit of context? Like there's an, a Gaelga, like module or modules provided by a university in Leipzig in Germany. So how does that happen? How, what funds that? Good question. Yeah, so I came over and I had no idea, first of all, and I actually saw the advert someone sent it to me on Facebook, above all the places. And I applied <laughs> yeah. and I knew nothing. And all I thought was, right, okay. And I, to be honest, I didn't even, you know, when you, when you apply for a job, you should be um, looking into the company and looking into what they do. I didn't really, I just applied for it because I didn't have high hopes for myself. <laughs> but everyone egged me on to do it. Fine. So I put in the CV and um, I got a call back from the current lecturer at the time. And um, he was a Donegal man and he was leaving. So they were looking for a replacement. And I did a small interview on the phone and then I met um, with on the phone as well uh, with the my current who's in charge of me, let's say. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, she had spoken to me and kind of gave me the rundown of what was going on. So um, Irish has been taught in uh, Uni Leipzig since 2013. Now I will, I'll stand corrected if someone can correct me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's 2013 as far as I remember. And um, that is funded by the um, the Department of Arts, Culture and the Gaeltha. So they, um, they would offer money to third level institutes abroad that would promote and teach the Irish language. So we're not the only ones in Europe, of course. There's plenty of places around Europe that you can learn Irish yeah. in university. So 
um, even when I went on my Erasmus, I went on a year abroad. I didn't even know Leipzig had done Irish. I went to the west of Germany. I went to Bonn, which had a small Irish um, department as well. Now, if I look at what we do in Leipzig and what they do in Bonn, um, we have um, a lot more. We cater to a lot more many more levels let's say so you would enroll as a student here let's say you want to do your bachelor and you want to have Irish involved in that we fall under the um the bachelor for uh, European minority languages so under that then there's a couple of languages that you'd study uh, Irish being one of them Sorbian being another which is the minority language in the east of Germany it's there's upper and lower Sorbian quite similar to the upper Sorbians like Polish the lower Sorbians like Czech and um, it's a Slavic language but um, it's very much a minority language here so we fall under that and I then would teach first year, second years and third years. And within each year, then there's certain modules that we cover. So there's always an Irish language module, of course. So we always start off, you know, from the beginning in first year, people who've never heard, seen, spoken Irish before. Some people have a little bit, maybe they went on holidays to Ireland or they're interested in the music. They might know what it sounds like at least. Oh, yeah. The music, um, yeah. Yeah, you'd, I often ask them, you know, how do they, does anyone know any Irish? And they've maybe seen it in on you know, on television and songs and things like that, or poetry. Mm -hmm. But um, we do that. And then we also do a module of old Irish um, in the second semester of first year. And then in second year, we'd also do language and you also do, then do Irish literature. And then in um, final year, then we do a module of we looked at we look at varieties of Irish. So I hone in on different um, dialects. The students do projects or presentations on different dialects. I get them to look at, you know, certain aspects of a dialect. Then we look at maybe some writers that write dialectically. And then in the final semesters in third year, um, there's something which is called specialized Irish or Fach, Fach Irish, we say in German. And basically we'd look at specific, really specific um, Irish. And I kind of leave it up to what the students are interested in. So we might, um, I had a student one year who really wanted to look at uh, medical Irish. So oh, we yeah, I yeah. found pieces on that would describe, you know, whatever medical Irish we have. Um, law, we'd look at law tracks, maybe something from the from the constitution in Irish and things like that. So it's really interesting. So we get to a, a quite a high level um, in, in the university, obviously it depends on how much work the student puts in as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, we go from zero to up to a point where they are able to, um, they write me an entire essay in their final semester in Irish, which is wow. in three years, a very, a very good thing. And I think a lot of people, wouldn't think that we'd get to that level but absolutely we do wow um are, are these students like they'd have obviously a lot going on in their lives so like would you find do they ever like tune into radio and in their own free time or are they doing any of that i tell them always i'm always sharing you know even i, t I tell them about podcasts things on tg car yeah. going on i share things that are happening you know more maybe something's going on next week. I share that with them. I can't tell you if they do. I'm sure some of them do. I have gotten yeah. um, recommendations for books and TV programs and um, podcasts from them saying, oh, I found this and I was listening to it. I didn't understand everything, but I thought maybe you could, you'd like it, Emma, or maybe you could show the other students. So I really like how proactive the students are. You know, I don't think every single one of them are listening to Radio Nagoya every day, but who sure. is, you know, especially yeah. in university with many things going on. But I think a lot of them make a really good conscious effort to just do more than what's in the book or what's mm. for homework. And I really love that because it inspires me to keep showing them, you know, I'm, I get the I get the feedback from them that they enjoyed something or they found something. So I'm going to keep doing that and telling them, you know, more and more and more. And whether they use it or not, that's up to them. But I definitely think that a lot of the students are quite proactive in what they do. Yeah. Um, we might come back to like your recommended resources for learning mm -hmm. Irish language. Mm -hmm. um, it's so interesting that like you're teaching people who possibly never visited Ireland um they're definitely not native speakers mm -hmm. even English native speakers obviously mostly so 
it's it's interesting you know and that gives you insight um how about we jump to bite size public because like emma you're at the core of how bite size irish helps people like so to give my kind of background i guess of how your role as community manager at bites as irish fits in like when we started years ago um the idea was online self-study lessons with um phonetic pronunciation and audio recordings and that's still a core part of bites as irish but i think we realized that it wasn't how we could best help people of course like learning language is something more interactive than that and we want to encourage people to learn irish and practice it our motto and to use irish that's our ultimate goal so our grow membership is where you step in um helping people use their self-study material that we have for bite-sized irish members but bite size public public means community and you're the community manager so emma um how would you describe what what is bite size public are they yeah so it's as you said an online community where i am there monday to friday every day uh prompting people firstly right i start off i come on in the morning or whatever time i pop on and i go to let's say yesterday's posts that i post and what i post are prompts be it reading writing listening um whatever there's a couple of different things that i do and i try just to get the members working on a little piece it might only take 10 15 minutes out of their day um, but it's something other than what's going on on Course C. Because I know that when people are doing the Course C or the courses that we have available, you know, they're working through a certain topic and they might be on that topic for a week or two. Mm. Now, what I try to do is I try and give them other topics that will just give them an extra bit of vocab or an extra bit of skill of reading or something to listen to that might not be anything to do with what they're doing on Course E, but it's you know, it's short enough for them to be able to do it quick enough and it won't take hours because I know people want to sit down for maybe two hours and learn their their language or learn their, you know, whatever grammar they want to do. Sure so it's something... that's not sustainable either, is it? As no, we see absolutely it. Yeah. not. You know, or maybe that day they didn't get a chance to log on to Coursey, but they're on Pubble because it's so interactive. People are chatting. It's not as, you know, I have to sit down now and do an hour of work. Hmm. You see what I've posted that day. Oh, Emma posted this. OK, that's a little reading piece. There's five lines in it. Sometimes there's 10, depending. Yeah. And if people I, I find that people feel a little bit more up to doing something that's small these little goals that they have every day yeah. and i like it because i change it up and i i see if people enjoy it or not i get a lot of comments saying thanks and i really enjoyed that one and i like it because people are diff interested in different things in irish you know people want to learn people learn irish or learn a language in general for different reasons and i try and i suppose appeal to everyone at a certain point so in the week i'll cover one topic i'll have a tema or a theme of the week the mm. theme this week for example is movement so we're doing a lot on north south east west coming from the west going north all of that and that's a tough topic for anyone that is learning irish that is, is a confusing topic and to sit down and read a whole piece on it maybe somewhere online can be daunting so i've i'm breaking it up into little parts that are accessible to everyone and that is sustainable as you said for someone to sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and do now i'm not the only one running the show there um at all you know i'm a part of it there but without the members then i'm posting into thin air so it all depends on how active everybody is and all the members are on bubble and luckily for us we have a great community on there and I feel like I know everyone. I feel like I've personally, I'm personally friends with everyone there. And um, we get to share just normal conversation as well as doing the um, exercises or the prompts that I do every day. 
I host a monthly call with members who want to join and we do reading and conversation. So we spend the first 10 or 15 minutes catching up because we only get to chat once a month. So we get carried away with just, you know, sharing news and yeah. telling a joke. And uh, but I, that's my favorite part because I really feel that. Ooh. The people on Pubble have connected so well, even though I'm sure most of them have never met each other in person. Um, and it can be hard to learn a language online, but I find that Bite Size Pubble is just a perfect, perfect melody of everything. You know, it's it's you have that online learning that you can do it from home. You don't have to go to a class, but you don't have this kind of isolation of, OK, I'm learning this language, but who can I talk to? You kind of meet in the middle with Bite Size Pubble where you can type it and ask questions, but you also have the chance to meet me once a month, meet each other on um, members bio. So the, the call of the members that they just organize themselves and also then once a week with Siobhan on Bite Size bio with the scripted calls. So yeah, Pubble is just I, I love logging on there every day because people share personal stories, pictures, things that they've done. And then also they are able to ask me questions, privately message me if they want extra work or extra corrections done. They talk to themselves. They it's 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 just brilliant. It's really, really, really good. And I think um, without Pubble, you know, bite size wouldn't be where it is now i think even the people that are on pubble and yeah. the growth members and even the explore members you know they log on even to our our monthly q and a's on youtube and you see them all there and they're all chatting with each other as well in the live chat so mm -hmm. it's not only on on you know every day for 10 minutes it's an ongoing thing that everybody is there and someone's always there to reply and chat and everything so yeah, and fair play, like you inject that energy into Bite Size Puzzle with your daily challenges, your do line, and that creates like momentum. It gives a prompt, as you say, for people to join in. Um, so Gramila Mahagat and fair play, Emma, and um, we're lucky to have you. Um, so let's see, like uh, we noticed, I think, in the past kind of year that. There were some more Irish people um, joining than previously. Like mm -hmm. <clears throat> historically, Bite Size Irish has been very an international audience. Our pricing has been in dollars. Um, we're working on changing that. We're we want to help people within Ireland and outside of Ireland. So make it more balanced. We've seen more Irish people join Bite Size Pubble. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you said that. The, your monthly cugger mugger call you really enjoy that um what i love seeing on bite size pubble is we have a file test doc welcome in area and we encourage when you join as a grow member that you go there and post a hello to everybody and introduce yourself and what i love seeing is basically immediately there's replies coming in of existing members saying you love it here um join the live calls do this and it's very supportive so mm -hmm. um this is our third time trying to set up a community at bites as irish it goes back many years the initiative um but with you being there uh, every day it's that's the glue that's what makes the community Mm -hmm. and then the people who come in so so you were to tie this back to your work uh, in the university as well um what would be your go-to resources and we can link these in the show notes um uh, so let's say somebody is like actively learning Gaelga. what are like three resources online that you think they should not ignore hmm three my top three so first one that i love and i even use myself um is uh leilat and we mention that all the time on um on the q and a leilat and leonish now i you i like that because um a big problem with people is that they're worried about pronunciation and what if i'm not pronouncing something correctly and i don't know how that's said now with our core c and everything that we have in in bite size um, we have 
we have audio for you to you know to help you learn but what if you're reading something that's you know a book or whatever you have no idea unless you have someone to read it to you so these two websites basically they allow you to listen to someone reading it and uh, you can read along with it and I think that's a really important part because even think about it when you're a child there is you always have someone reading to you don't you you and I I don't want to compare anyone to children but children you learn your languages quickly when you're a child and how is that done oftentimes it's read to you so you see the words and then you can link it with it so Leilath and Leinish are perfect um for a normal level you can go up and down in level in those as well it, you don't have to just be a beginner you can move forward there's there's many many things on there so I love that um the second thing I would say would be listening to well yeah listening to the radio um but one of them is um there's a list of podcasts online other I actually am pretty sure that this podcast is in there but I like podcasts because you can skip and pause and go back when you're listening to the radio live you can't so much do that mm. um and I feel like podcasts are great because when you're listening to the radio you kind of have to just listen to what's on the radio you have to listen yeah, to, to, you know you don't in, have a, yeah it? you don't have a choice but with podcasts there's a couple of ones um, that are available. I'm, I'm not going to try and name them all now, but um, podcasts are a great way because you can stop and pause and go back, as I said, but also you can choose the topic. You can see what they're talking about beforehand. Yeah. And if you're interested in something, you know, you should listen to that. You know, if you're interested in politics and you find one on politics or a piece that they're talking for 20 minutes on politics, do that. Yeah. And I link that then with reading um on Turishk and Nos Punkai. Now these might be obvious to people, but sometimes the, mo the most obvious ones are the best ones, aren't they? So Turishk and Nos Punkai are um, two great websites for reading um, articles, so news articles and lifestyle articles. Um, what I would say is though that- Have I again, spent Turishk properly there? Yeah, you have as far as I, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, you find something that you're interested in if I like I'm not interested in sports I don't listen to things about sports in English I don't listen to them in German and I'm not going to listen to them in Irish okay only if I have to you know if it's on the news but if I'm reading something I will try and find something that I'm interested in in my hobbies if I am really interested in music I'm going to try and find something to read you know when I was learning German even here I'd always try and listen to something that you know was relevant to what I had already known or also, if you're just interested in news in general, and you'd already listen, you've already listened to the news this morning in English. Why not go and try and find a written piece on it in Irish? Because you're going to know the story of what's going on, and you're going to know, you know, the kind of jargon that's being used in English. And you can, you'll be surprised what you can figure out then by just having the context in another language. Does that make sense? Mm. Like you have the context, you know. Let's say. I don't know, some new pre someone became president this week in blah, 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 blah. If you try and find something that will be on Torsh.ie, because that does give you daily news, as well as on RTE.ie, they have a section in Irish as well. Find that in Irish and you'll be able to link back and you won't be struggling even, because half the problem is sometimes figuring out what the hell they're talking about or Absolutely. what the hell you're reading, you know, yeah. and then comes the vocabulary. So if it you want- It can be very daunting, want, like- yeah. yeah, really, because you're like, I don't even know where to start here. Yeah. And I oh, I know this all too well, even from learning German. You know, you try and you start reading a piece and you're like, hang on, I don't even know this topic. I don't even know anything about this in English. So always read it back to you because you're going to then have a better idea of what's going on. So reading online, listening to things online, but more so the key point there is making it relevant to you and your life, your hobbies, your interests. Mm -hmm. rather than just randomly choosing something online to read today plan it out a little bit better you know or maybe choose yourself a theme every week you know if you're planning on reading two two um two articles per week maybe this week I'll read two articles on health and next week I'll read two articles on sports and the following week and so on and so forth and 
you know, you might or you might just choose for a month long just to read health articles and you'll see where you'll be at the start and see where you are at the end of the month. I can guarantee you you'll understand much more by the end of the month if you stick with, you know, a little plan for yourself. So mm -hmm. that might be a bit obvious, you know, to just read and listen, but it's more so how you read and listen would be my advice. Mm. It's like that age old problem of how do I keep going with something how do i stick with it mm -hmm. our motto is Gaglo, irish every day mm -hmm. and i love that you're like linking that back to your own interests what you find motivating what you find interesting it doesn't have to be what somebody else finds interesting right mm -hmm. so i uh, i love that um are there any books for studying the irish language that you would recommend like if a bite size irish member wrote in to support their learning on bite size irish mm -hmm. is there anything that like any of those that pop to mind that you definitely recommend definitely yeah so the ones i use and a lot of people might be um already familiar with them would be um we've said it before there's the green one which is for beginners and the red one for um for intermediates and I like that because it's, you know, especially if you're starting off, it's in English and then they explain, you know, you have your vocab in Irish and then it's in English as well. It's not fully in Irish because I think sometimes diving into a book that's completely taught through Irish can be good, but it can be challenging for a lot of people. And, you know, when they open the book, they think, I don't even know what they're asking me to do here. So I love the Gwilga Gonstro books. And um, the only thing I will say is that they're not follow ons from each other. You know, sometimes you think you know um the green would be the starters and when you're finished the green you move on to the red one it's more so if you're a beginner you start off with the green and you go through that but if you have a little bit of irish or maybe you had it in school um you start with the red one which is the lower intermediate book they they kind of cross over there's a lot of crossover um on the topics so bear that in mind if you are going for them um the other book that i like and it's an older book is colloquial irish it's it follows the same the same um, chapter structure as Gaeilge Gans through, which all follow the TEG, so the Tastus Ordepoch and the Gaeilge. So basically the common European framework for language learning. Um, you start off, you know, meeting, greeting, my family, moving, you know, they, so I actually use those together. I use both of them and I love to give um, the students, you know, we'll go through the chapter, whatever, chapter three in Gwil Gonsro, and then I'll say, right, for homework now, take this piece from chapter three in uh, Colloquial Irish. They're nothing to do with each other, but they actually mm -hmm. so happen to cross over. And I like Colloquial Irish because they give a lot of um, example dialect or di dialogue even. And um, both of those books have audio that go with them. And the third book that I definitely or a series of books would be uh, Buntus Kainte. Mm -hmm. uh, Buntus Kainte is a completely audio style learning. And um, you have a book, um, you at the top of the page, there'll be a word. It could be I'm sure, which means weather. And then they'll give you maybe six to eight example sentences. Tan I'm sure for. Tan I'm sure fluch. So the weather is cold. The weather is wet. And then they give a mini conversation. It's really good for practicing um, your speaking and listening pronunciation and that so there's three of those so start off with the first one and work your way through them they're they're quite cheap as well um per book i think it might be only 10 euro or something around along the lines of that um and they come with a cd as well so they'd be my three main ones i have a bookshelf of books here that i haven't mm. even tried yet so maybe ask me again in a year or one <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'll have three more um new ones that i can recommend mm. Well, there's always new stuff coming up, isn't there, and mm -hmm. online as well. So definitely our approach at Bites as Irish, it's not stick with one thing, but broaden your horizons and try to expose yourself to as many different sources as you can manage, really. Mm -hmm. um, part of Gael Gagach Law as well is that you're kind of absor absorbing, you're letting the language into your daily life. It doesn't always have to be study, like definitely not, like, try for example leaving radio on the ground if they're running in the background or if you like singing or music or whatever is interesting to you leave tg kahar on in the background um but the more you can do that and going back to earlier thing you said about your mother you know using phrases with 
if there are people in your life you can use a bit of Irish wit to Mm -hmm. do that consciously so yeah thanks that's all kind of feeding in together isn't it so I Mm -hmm. love the advice that you're giving um so Emma like you come across a lot of Irish language learners from a lot of different backgrounds people in Ireland people outside of Ireland university students in Germany um do you see like maybe big differences in like how they approach the language and the type of question that they put to you Mm -hmm. definitely yeah so even in the classroom here in Germany I do get Erasmus students coming over um from Ireland and they come into my Irish class so they (laughs) it's it, i love it because then they're my token they're my token irish person yeah. you know everyone everyone can ask them but oftentimes they have questions as well so they're not you know not everyone that comes over here is um you know native or fluent in irish but i love having them in the class because they give a different outlook on or they have a different outlook That's on the true. language or they have they have things that that the stu- they'd ask questions that other students from germany or from whatever country that they're from wouldn't ask so I find that um, my students in particular, they are very interested in, they find the grammar, the grammar, the word order. Um, which is, Irish is a, ver- a VSO language, a verb subject, object language. Now, for Irish people that have had a bit in school, it's kind of something you don't think about. No, I, you, I, don't you ever, don't. I never heard of VSO until I, yeah. I think until I came here, maybe, maybe a little bit before. But, yeah. you know, it's something that would just, you'd have, as a child, you know, on Vulcadigum, um, is phaser long tommy, you don't even know, but you are starting with the verb there. So the first questions that come from anyone that um is totally, you know, new to Irish, totally alien to the language and its structure is how do I how do I, mm. you know, build this sentence? Whereas then um the Irish people then ask more they see maybe me using a, a type of verb, maybe a form of be, for example, yeah, on will me. And then they say, wait, is will something to do with thaw? And I'm like, yes, it is. It's the question form of thaw. So I love it because then the, the students that are in the class that, you know, have wouldn't have asked that question in the first place or wouldn't even put two and two together there, um, they'd say, Uh Aha, okay. So I love how um, students, even on Pubble as well, that's the thing. You have people on Pubble that are doing the same thing. People that might have Irish from school or Irish already or done a couple of Irish courses themselves. um, They would ask different questions to those who have never really dealt with Irish before. And they help each other because it helps me. Well, as a teacher, I love it because I am getting questions that I have never even thought of. Um, I got a question before. How do I know the difference in pronunciation between kahir, kahir and kahir? Now, I have never even put any of those in the same category. So kahir is the number four. Kahir is, um, means city and kahir is a chair. Owen, would you ever put those in the same? Would you ever in your head have mixed those up I know where we have like no like but now that you say it they're very similar they're very similar so someone who's coming to Irish Irish you know from from nothing they'd look at Cahar and they'd say okay and then they'd see Cahar and they'd say okay there's just an e in there and then Cahir you're like "Mm, okay chair uh well there's just an o in there so that's something that now I'm like, okay, you actually have a very good point made there. And I I don't think many people who have had it in who had Irish in school because mm. they know the word for or they know this. That's so, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's really a great outlook and it gives me then more scope. And I kind of am on the lookout for differences or similarities in certain things or how I explain things as well. Um changes and I think it's for the better because then the question it's not the only time the question's ever going to come up in my life and I get a better understanding of the grammar or the spelling or the pronunciation of Irish as well like the amount of grammar questions that I've gotten from people that I hadn't even thought of because I grew up speaking it and you know you'd say well it is what it is 
Well, why? Yeah. Well, it's cause, you know. I see that uh, happening on the Q&A a lot. Like, a, a question will come in, and when you and Siobhan are addressing it, it's like, oh, well, I've never actually considered that, but, like, let's try to work it out. Why mm -hmm. is it like this? So yeah. it's interesting, so it isn't it? You, everybody. It opens your eyes, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, let's say you do the regular Q&As, although we might mix it up on the team a bit more, but um, monthly Q&As on YouTube. Um, what's the most surprising thing there? Like, is there a trend that you see of people asking certain questions or something they're surprised with? Hmm. I do. I do like the questions where um, it's free, where phrases come into question because phrases differ in every language. You know, it's, um, I actually included um, one recently, and it was uh, current she Ola Ola Er Um Okay, Ola I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had only come across it recently, and it means it puts oil on my heart, which is actually it's music to my ears. Um, mm -hmm. so I love when people say, well, there's this phrase in Irish, is this like this in English? And it's totally, um, it's totally not a direct translation at all, but I love when people try and figure out, um, figure out similarities or differences in phrases in that case. I don't know if that even makes sense what I'm saying, but, um, I just love how the way Irish has, I don't know. I feel like a lot of what we say, even how you say um, I love you in Irish, you don't just say, you know, I love you. It's um, it's gra mochrihu or mochiolhu. So uh, which means you are the love of my heart or you are my music. So I find that um, when people ask questions like that, I love it because um, <clears throat> it shows really how beautiful Irish is. And you do get a lot of it. And also then um, similarities in or differences in phrases such as, you know, we had one there recently on the Q&A and it was um, tá isagum and tá rodeigin erólasagum. And what's the difference tá isagum versus tá erólasagum? They, mo they both mean I know, but how do you differentiate between them? And actually, who asked that, um, they likened it to the German. And then you find a link with German mm -hmm. where I actually was able to say, ah, oh, you're right. So Wissen and Kennen, if anyone's familiar with the German language. So you then find links with Irish um, and other languages as well. And I find that myself that really gives me a kick because I just love finding um, similarities and helping helping people find links with other languages or other things they're aware of or mm -hmm. that they're already familiar with. Mm -hmm. You're bringing me back to my secondary school days. I had French and I had one year of German and mm. they were both Asquelga, like at the Gueltlashta. So that was interesting. Mm. Um yeah, it's it can be hard if um if English is your like only language that you have command over. Mm -hmm. Um it can be hard to relate to like concepts like declension cases that don't really exist any longer in modern English um so definitely if you can link your Gaelge learning with something else with another language absolutely but like you start where you are right so mm -hmm. we you have to we, work with what you have, you have don't to work you? what you have that's it um I'm curious um of people who are listening to this um, who grew up in Ireland, went to school and are coming back to Gaelga. What I've heard a lot, I guess, over the years is like a sense of regret of not having learned more Gaelga mm -hmm. when they had the chance at school, but now they see uh, later the real value in it. Um, definitely the parents of school children as well they have like a specific motivation um to help out with their kids as well mm -hmm. and what would you say to someone who's like it, they did irish at school um they're definitely they feel this intrinsic curiosity to come back to the language but they see the road ahead ahead of them as you know 
being too overwhelming as they see it right now to really uh, speak a Gaelge. What would you tell them? Well, I tell them, firstly, it's never too late. That's one thing. It's too late now. You know, I'm too old. I won't be able to remember it. Um, scrap that idea, first of all. Mm-hmm. Um, the second idea is that, or the second piece that I'd say would be that um, you've no, there's no time limit here. There is no end point that you have to be fluent by. Mm. There is no point that you have to say, right, I'm fluent now it's an ongoing thing. It's an ongoing journey forever. And it's up to you if you want to just commit to that. And committing to it doesn't mean that you have to sit down and do four hours a day or 10 hours a week, or you have to have a set amount. Incorporating it into your life is the first, is the first point. Mm. And if, if that's starting with 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes of maybe reading a book, a kid's book, that you might have already stored from when you were in school or when your kids are in mm. school or if your kids if you have kids that are in school and there's an Irish book reading their homework or reading their work or and then moving on maybe after a couple of weeks or a couple of months however long it might take you maybe you finish that book and moving on to another so starting with a book buy a book find a book borrow a book whatever it might be i would say to start with that and start reading just start reading because even you you might not know what every word is that's not the goal here the goal is trying to rejog your memory because we're talking about people that have went to school and had irish in school you have some level of irish in the back of your head you might not have used it for however many years start by reading and looking and seeing how you go and i think most people are surprised with how much they can understand if you have access to someone who can speak Irish, that's that's great. But a lot of people don't. But I find that even when I meet friends from maybe secondary school still or people from home who wouldn't have much Irish or haven't used Irish since finishing their leaving certificate, sometimes I'll throw in some Irish to them. And the thing is that you'll always hear with people is, I can understand you, but I can't answer you. That's the first thing that you'll hear with a lot of sure. people. And that's natural, isn't it? Sure, that's the first thing. The, one of the first things that you learn to do is understand a language. Speaking is one of the last skills that you actually develop when you're learning a language. Mm-hmm. Understanding is the first point. Think about how many times, even if you'd French in school and you could understand the teacher, but all you could say is, you know, we oui or <laughs> no, or, you know, and it's the same idea with Irish. So it's firstly getting your ear trained back into understanding and listening. Mm-hmm. The biggest the biggest fear that people have is saying something out loud and it being wrong. I'm sorry to tell you, but no one cares if you're wrong. If you're telling someone that you're a language learner and you want to practice Irish, if someone if someone says, yeah, if someone is there to help you or speak Irish or you, if you know someone that has Irish and you want to speak it, but you're afraid in case they laugh at you, they won't. If they do, I think they're about 0.001 of the population that would do that to anyone. Um, so I think that getting over that fear and also training your ear back in, they're kind of two things, depending on, I don't know how long people will spend trying to do that, but it doesn't matter how long it takes. It's the fact that you're committing to it and doing it every day or every two days until you get to every day. You know, it's something mm-hmm. it's something I like to say, like you have to build up a habit. It takes, I don't know, a month. I can't even remember. As they say, yeah. As they say, however many days they say to build a habit. The habit will only be 10 minutes for a month, let's say. And then build it up to 20 minutes. And then you might start enjoying it. Maybe the first month you might not, you might hate it. You might think, I'm mm. never going to get to the end of this. I'm never going to get to the end. But give yourself a chance. I think people give, start all, you know, they start positive and they see within a couple of weeks time, often people will just give up and they can't, they don't give yourself the chance to see how you get on. You know, you need to cut yourself some slack as well and not be so hard on yourself. A lot of people are so difficult, like they find that they're, they're too hard on themselves. Simply, simple as, you know, they, they think, no, I'm, I can't, I can't remember. Give yourself a chance. It's hard to come back to a language. It's really, really, really hard to come back and do and start basically from scratch. But if you start reading and working on it very, very in small parts and then moving on, I think um, you will see progress where you weren't expecting it or you will understand a lot more than you thought you would be able to. I love that um, very positive approach, Emma. So 
I think it's good to leave it at that, isn't it? Um, on that positive note, um, this we call it a journey. This language learning journey is available to everyone. Like mm -hmm. you said, you start where you are, <laughs> not somewhere else. You are where you yeah. are. And it's I, I really like your point that you're it's not really aiming towards a certain point by a certain time. I don't think it works like that. We set ourselves up for like failed expectations, I think, with mm -hmm. language. It's what I find really interesting over the years because learning language, it's not a simple process. You could say it's pretty straightforward. Like the the formula is is simple enough. Like as we say, Gwail Gagak Um, but mentally or psychologically, it's like how how to get yourself there. And it is possible. Um mm -hmm. just I would say drop the judgment of yourself and try to enjoy it, right? It's related yeah. to everything you said, Emma. Just be nice to yourself and give yourself mm. time. That's all I'll say. It's a really difficult thing and um there's no one you know breathing down your neck to get it done by the end of 2022 you know you've yeah. many years after that absolutely yeah so i'm gonna we'll tell people bitesize.irish is our website um we have membership plans where you can self-study where there are online resources or indeed learn with that and together with our grow plan and Emma, our community manager, is a core part of that. Um, we're very lucky at Bites as Irish that the different team members are like, including yourself, Emma, have a real genuine gra for Gaelga and for helping people to learn the language. Um, I'm very proud of what we do, you know, week to week. Um, so Emma, as I said, we're very lucky to have you as part of Bite Size Irish and I hope that people feel like they've gotten to know you um that bit more. Um of course every YouTube video we have to make the call out subscribe to the channel and you'll get notified of our monthly live Q and A's for Irish language learners. And if you're listening to this as the Bite Size Irish podcast you can find the show notes on our webpage, Bites as at Irish, and you go to the podcast under more, and all the show notes will be there. If you don't, if you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to find the Bites as Irish podcast, you can do so on all the usual places like iTunes and Spotify. So, Emma, um, Gramila Mahagotarist. Gramila. Visha Anya Slartlet is very nice to talk to you and we leave it at that. Slan Gafol. Slan.